Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Brandon Johnson. I'm about to take you for a ride on a beautiful 2010 Sea ray 240 Sun Deck. Well guys, welcome back to the Use Boats TV YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna do an instructional video on how to operate, as well as how uh, this boat operates, which is a 2010 Sea Ray 240 Sun Deck. We're going out on the water. We're gonna basically go over everything from start to finish on how to operate one of these boats. So, once again, thanks for joining us. Let's get started right now. But first, I'd like to introduce our channel. I've been passionately selling boats for over 19 years. The purpose of this channel is to help you and your family enjoy boats and boating just as much as my family and I enjoy it. So thanks to the help of my staff here at Heartland Marine and my sons, we've been able to successfully upload hundreds of boat reviews, instructional operation, help, and how-to videos. I don't ask for anything in return, except for the opportunity to possibly help you find a boat in your time frame. So to stay up on everything Bye, we upload, click that subscribe button below and stay tuned. Nice. So now, once you have your plug in the boat, and the boat in the water, you come back here underneath the aft bench seat, there's a latch. You just lift it up right in the middle. It's got gas assisted struts to help hold it open. And you have dual batteries with the switch right here. So when we are ready to go boating, we turn it to both. The alternator from the engine is gonna charge both the batteries. If we're gonna stop, cove out, listen to the radio, we're gonna switch it to one or two. That'll isolate everything on one single standalone battery. A boat only needs a battery to run, so one is good enough if you go to start it and it click, click, click and dies. When you're done for the day, just shut it off. But we got it on both, so we're gonna climb up to the helm. As we walk to the helm, in this part of the video, I always like to point out in the description below, which is right down below on the left side, there's a little arrow, you click that down and that'll open up and I'll include a bunch of links there that should help enhance everyone's boat ownership experience, things like how to dock boats, how to tie up boats, uh, what to do when your boat won't start, how to operate tilt and trim, so a lot of relevant stuff that'll help guide you through uh, operating any boat, period, especially this one. So, right here, we have our shifter and our steering wheel. However, you open up the storage box above the helm. This is where your key switch is. One of the reasons why Sea Ray is such an elite brand is because every sole boat they have, they survey their customers. What do you like about your boat? What don't you like? What would you change if you could? So they also measure their warranty claims. So people breaking off keys, ignition switches, and dashes when kids go crazy or you hit big waves is no joke. So right here, we have an accessory for accessories like the radio. On is on. That little beep will sound, which means, hey, the boat's getting ready to start. And with our smart craft right here, we can just hit start. Hit it one time, it'll fire itself right up. Easy as that. So anybody can drive a boat up and down the lake all day. It takes a little practice docking. And one thing I love about the digital throttle and shift that this specific boat has is it's super smooth. You push in the button, there's a definitive catch for forward. See how it kind of holds itself in place? Back to neutral. Again, you only have to touch the button to engage it in a gear. Reverse right here, definitive catch. So never drive faster than you want to hit something. A definitive catch will help you from lunging forward or reverse. So that's a great feature that the digital throttle and shift offers. It also shifts extremely smooth and maneuvers extremely well because it's a dual prop out drive. Now, I've had a lot of people excited to drive and as they accelerate, they have their thumb on the trim up button. Right here, that raises the out drive out of the water. And if you come over here, here Bill, we'll just show them the trim. Right here, we have an actual gauge like normal boats. But the beauty of um, SmartCraft is this will actually show our percentage as well, our trim angle. All the way down is right there at two, okay? Um, speaking of spark craft, what I want to do now is go through the gauges and the operating systems like your accessory features and such, and then we'll go ahead and drive the boat. So right here we have our speedometer, we have our oil pressure, engine temperature, fuel, and tilt and trim. Now 
All these gauges are great. CRA does a four in one gauge, so it declutters the dash. However, with this one right here, you'll probably never look at anything else because you can scroll through your systems. You have 120 hours, 12.6 volts. We're burning 0.7 gallons per hour. We've used 640, we're at 540 RPM. The depth is 36.7 feet, C temp, uh, speedometer, every, all our systems are okay, voltage, trim. It doesn't matter um, really what you leave this at, or you can leave this at just about anything you want. And when you use your tilt and trim, it'll just take over for you. So we're gonna leave it at depth right here. See, so uh, use your trim, it'll pick up, and then it'll go away after a few seconds have passed. Now, buttons and switches. Water pump, that's for the water system. Bilge pump, that pumps out water out of the bilge. That is automatic, but the Manufa National Marine Manufacturer Association that governs how all boats are built says every boat has to have a switch. Uh, blower. Hopefully you can hear that. Ventilates the engine compartment. Docking lights are up front. Navigation light, that's the red and green built in up front when you're driving at night. Anchor light, stopped at night. I love these toggle switches, by the way. Cockpit lights are on the interior somewhere. Like there's a soft LED right back there. A uh, wiper. There's not one, but there's a, a button for one. Hull lights, I'm not sure if this has any, but we'll check that when we get it pulled out of the water. Accessory, God knows. Sometimes at night it'll turn on some other kind of funky uh, light somewhere. Right here, we have our stereo. We connect our phone into it. Change the station. Sounds good. I, I, I don't like this song at all, but it sounds good. All right. So now we have tilt and trim, right? Or I'm sorry, uh, tilt wheel. We can set our wheel wherever we want it by pushing this in and just kind of setting it all up. But what I want to do now is I'm going to take the camera from Mr. Bill here and I'm going to drive the boat. Uh, we're going to find a comfortable cruise speed. We're going to check out the time to plane and we're going to see what the top speed is. Um, anytime you test drive a boat, period, you should always drive the boat as hard as you can trim down. That puts the most load on that engine. If it hit, misses, spits, sputters, backfires, pops, falls on its face, we know that we've got something going on there. Um, but if everything runs strong when it's trimmed down, then we can go ahead and trim up, release that bow, get up on top of the water, and we'll see what our true top speed is. Because remember, keeping it trimmed down and running it hard is pushing your bow at a downward angle. All right, now let's get going. <laughs> now for the driving portion. So we're at a dead stop here on a beautiful friggin' foggy day. Fog will go away and it's going to rain in two hours and we have a terrible storm coming in. So we thought we'd go ahead and knock this out and get this done. Okay, dead stop. Engage into gear, we push our button in. Remember our throttle range is beyond that. So any kind of water sports you're gonna do, uh, this would be kind of where you'd start. You know, you get the slack out of the line, then you go ahead and take off. So what I wanna check now is our time to plane. The Sea Ray 240 Sun Deck has a three degree bow rise hole design, so it only takes <laughs> like three seconds to plane. But let's check it. it runs smooth all the time. I should have shut that door. One, two, three. See that? That's crazy. 20 miles an hour. So we'll go ahead and slow down now. So any kind of water sports you want to do, you want to stay kind of about, you know, 25 mile an hour or under. All I wanted to do here was check our speed with our speedometer and it's reading correctly. So I'll go ahead and shut that off because it's annoying. It beeps because it has low GPS accuracy. So back to water sports right here, you know, about 25 miles an hour, 20, 25. This is as fast as you do just about anything. Some like, you know, real avid slalom skiers, skiers would like to go faster. This is a nice smooth, nice smooth wake it puts off behind us. Great shape to it. Now let's go ahead and hammer down and see what our top speed is. I can't see nothing in this fog. I'm gonna turn around where I can see a little better. The boat turns extremely smooth, see? One finger, and we're putting, just banking the boat here. Straighten her back out. Pat on backwards. All right, hammer down. Oh yeah, it definitely has a lot of pickup with the 350 Mag MPI. It's cutting through our own waves here. Handles it extremely well because it's a true V hull. Look at our speed, we got 40 miles an hour and we are trimmed. You see how flat we are running right now? You see where the wake's coming off the side of the boat, kind of forward of us? 
So as we trim up, remember we're releasing the nose. 40 mile an hour, doesn't hit, miss, bit, spot, sputter, whatever, fall on its face, runs nice and stronger, so we're gonna trim up. One, two, I can already feel the release. See it trim up there, four, five, see how our speed increases, now we're 45 miles an hour, where's that wave? Since we trimmed up, that wave went to the back of the boat. So let's keep pushing this as hard as we can, see what the top speed will be. 40, I'd say seven miles an hour, 48 maybe. About right there, I'm starting to feel it kind of release in the hole. I can feel the shifter, I can feel it here. Look at that rooster tail, this baby flies. So yeah, about 48 miles an hour is gonna be our top speed. Always remember before you go to make a sharp turn, I want you to go ahead and trim back down all the way, which is two, and hold on tight, Bill. Let's just show them. So a lot of hole designs like this, they have some kind of gimmick. Gold des hole designs in boats this size have some kind of gimmick about a cutout or something. But the problem with those is they skip. You turn this bad boy hard and see how it just grabs the water, doesn't skip whatsoever. Like a jet boat, we can go ahead and push it down because it performs extremely well. A lot of pickup here. We gotta love this boat, it runs amazing. What we're gonna do now is go back and give you some trailering tips, how to put it back on the trailer. Then we'll do an exterior interior walkthrough condition report, and that'll be it. Thanks for staying with us. So anytime you launch a boat in the water, it's real easy in terms of how deep do you put it? Like how far in the water do you back in? You just back in so you see the rear end of your boat float. Once it floats, that's good enough. Putting it on the trailer, that's when a lot of people struggle, and I truly believe the reason for that is, most generally, 99% of the time to get the trailer too deep in the water. So, Billy, go ahead and show them up there. Do you see how we can see our guide bunks forward? The front bunks, the two closest to the back of your tow vehicle, you want those out of the water anywhere from six to 18 inches. You don't have to get a tape measure and get that specific, but as long as you can see those and you have a trailer fitted specifically for the boat, such as this one, there's nowhere for the boat to go. If we get the V in the middle of the guide boards, the boat's just gonna naturally go onto the right spot. You always want to make sure you get your bow eye, which is the little circle up front, flush with the roller, which is the yellow thing on the trailer. I like to go in gear, out of gear. That way I've got complete control. In gear, out of gear, keeping it in the middle, and just let the trailer catch you. It's okay to rock side to side. Once the trailer catches you, go ahead and put it in forward. Always check your depth. Like right now, we're in about three feet. So I'm trimmed all the way down. This boat's gonna draft close to that. So I wanna trim up maybe to 10. That way our bottom of our skag, bottom of the outdrive doesn't hit ground. And we're gonna go ahead and just nice, slow, and steady Lee, use acceleration. Herky jerky is what gets people hurt when they're doing this. Makes people fall over. So nice, slow, and steady. See how I didn't rev it up? I just went nice and steadily forward. And there we go. We're gonna go ahead and hook that up and pull this out of the water. Got her yanked out of the water here and we are going to check out the gel coat. So we're gonna do a nice, slow, steady, methodical walk around. So we're going above the rub rail. We've moved, removed the graphics off the top cap. This thing, so when the factory installed the uh, battery charger, they put the ring on upside down. That's, look, see? That's specifically what happened there. Nothing I can do about that. I don't want to take it all apart. It's got pop-out cleats. Oh, the rub rail looks great, by the way, too. There's no dings or nicks in that. Um, we have our waste and water. Got some more pop-out cleats. When you're looking at boats, guys, you always make sure those pop in or out because they're spring-loaded. So if they're broke, it's really hard to fix them. Staying down below the rub rail to the port side. Everything looks absolutely stunning over here. Great deep shine to it. We'll drop down whole side to the port side. We got a reverse chine lifting strakes and keel we're gonna check out. Let's get down a little lower here. Everything at the stem is beautiful. We've got to hook it back up. See, everything's great. Let's go ahead and come around to the starboard side. Another thing you want to look for, it doesn't hurt it, but some people will fold the ladder up wrong or have their anchor line sticking out and they'll chip that up. You know, it doesn't hurt anything, but 
hurts your feelings when you look at it. Okay, as we come around the starboard side, we fix some scratches right in here, in this area. And when we removed the graphics, we found two more nicks right here. And the boat's going from here back to the shop to get those fixed. So those will get wet sanded out. They will be gone. Lower vent covers. Little tiny bit of a scuff here in the rub rail and the white. Dropping down whole side to the starboard side. Gel coat is great. The only thing I've seen here is these little bitty nicks in the graphic right there. That's it. The only thing I see that is not representative of the boat looking like a brand new one. All right, so we got our swim platform. Let's walk around the edge of it. Got our transom, extended swim platform. Props are in great shape. Again, it's got the Bravo 3, 350 mag MPI with digital throttle and shift. Got a tiny bit of electrolysis on the tip front leading edge of the skeg. Cavitation plates, great. Tell the boat didn't sit in the water for very long. Now let's jump inside and check out the interior. As we jump inside, I wanna show you the ladder. So it just flips over and then it slides out. To put it away, you flip it up and then slide it back in before you shut your lid. Okay. All right. We got a stereo remote control back here. Got a little transom shower. So this skid plate's in great shape. I've, I've seen this specific stuff. Chaparral and C-Ray use it. I uh, put their own logos on it, but I've seen it. If it's got a lot of sun exposure, it really looks dry and crusty. This one's in great shape. So I love the storage access right here. Put all of our wet stuff in. Taking a look at the vinyl. It's in great, great, great shape. We have a door that blocks kids and critters. Little cooler storage. Look at that plug. That reminds me of my grandma's bathtub. But it's got one. That is insulated. Another place for a cooler right there. Carpet's in nice shape. The top of it's size. The back of it could be recoded. Um, I like to use flex seal. It works really great. I'm actually getting ready to do a how-to video on how to do that. How to use flex seal to kind of restore the backing on your boat carpet. I've already made all the clips, I just haven't edited it. But back to this boat, vinyl's in great shape. Gotta love these wing seats, they swivel and slide. We're looking at condition. We've already kind of went through the helm extremely well. Windshield, even the frame's not all scratched up and chewed up. More of the vinyl. These bolsters are a little firm, but they flip up. So you can sit up nice and high when you drive. Looking at the head compartment, we have our bow and cockpit snap-on covers and our porta potty right there. You can have a light in here. The light's not coming on. Maybe it's because I turned the battery off. Could be. All right, wind block door. So this is great to block the wind, just like so. Got a trash can, a fire extinguisher, table, the poles back there. Uh, some more storage that's accessible. I flipped that up so you can see it. Uh, accessible hatch for the wiring at the helm. Right here, see, we can plug our phone into a charger, just a 12 volt, USB and auxiliary. Benefit of using the USB is you can change the songs from the remote controls on the boat. Ignition switch, I'll leave it plug right here. Versus, you know, with the auxiliary, you have to change it from your phone. So coming into the bow, you always want to look, if you're worried about condition on boats, look at the tops of the seats more so than the butts. That's where the sun has the most damage on them. Everything looks great here. Kind of a little bitty tiny nick right there. Okay, I love that these seats hinge. All the fiberglass looks good. There's our anchor and bow boarding ladder. Gas assisted strut holds it up. This is a cooler. These are poles to hold the cover up. So when it rains, it doesn't fill it in. There we go. You can also access, I think, yes, you can. The storage here, I'm lifting that up. Then you got ski storage down the floor. Get these out of the way. Right, like that. So there's that. It's called ski storage, but I don't think you can put skis in there. But with this one, since you have the wakeboard tower, 
you got racks, so you really don't even need it. So you can put everything right in there. Your bimini tops fastens up here. Well, there she is. Well, once again, my name is Brandon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you on the water. I almost forgot when you're done for the day and you pull it out of the water, shut your battery switch off and pull your plug.